Thank goodness they've binned off away goals this season, eh? Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> uh, but from a spectacle, like we all said, amazing. Amazing game, one of the best games of the tournament so far. But if you're from a, a Real Madrid point of view, you, you're probably thinking, lucky, fortunate to come away with only a 1-0 no deficit, uh, deficit in, the, in the game. So still a lot to do, but um, amazing, amazing spectacle. How will they be feeling? I mean, it almost feels like they've, they've lost the game, but they will go in there feeling... Brilliant, the Real Madrid players. Yes, Three they times, they were two goals down. They will, and you never accuse City of being naive, but they were at times today. When they were 2-0 up and 3-1 up and 4-2 up, they shouldn't have let Madrid back into the game, but they... I don't know what it was, whether they were just overly confident because they were so far ahead, so superior, and as soon as they went two goals ahead, they started to drop deep. So that even, the, even the third goal, the Penenka, the penalty... They just had a chance be prior to that by Vinicius. They just had a t a another chance by Benzema. And you think to yourself, how has this happened? Yeah. City should just be controlling the game. Now, as soon as it went to 4-2, they should have just went, right, we are either being solid to the back and keeping it at 4-2, or we may nick another goal and go 5-2. But, you know, I'm with the lads. I still think City will, will score goals and possibly, probably win the game over there, the way they've played. But they've given Madrid a slimmer of hope and once they go back there with the fans it's a different scenario than it has been tonight I think a big big um, change in the the way the game went I think was Stones coming off mm -hmm. I think Stones' mm -hmm. injury was was it destabilised the, mm -hmm. the City team and, and, and unfortunately Fernandinho at 36 years old having to come in and play right back against one of the most informed wingers in, in the game at the moment I think it was that was a vulnerability then in the Man City team OK, well, let's get some instant reaction, actually, because Phil Foden and Bernardo Silva are in the tunnel right now. I believe they're with Dez. So, Dez, all yours. Absolutely bring on the second leg. We'll take a look at the penalty um, and plenty more before we come off air. We're on air for the next half an hour. But I think Bernardo's right, though, when he says, let's just remember we won this game of football. And that has to be the message, surely, from the manager over the next few days. You're leading going into a second leg of a Champions League semi-final. Yeah, and I think that will be the message. I think if you look at the, the, the result before the game, if you're saying you're going to go to the Bernabeu with a 1-0 lead, you take that. But the way the game's panned out, then that leads to the change or the feeling of a chance last. You could be going there with two goals up. I think if at any stage the game's 3-3 three, three and then you score late on and you win 4-3, then all of a sudden you're thinking, oh yeah, that builds confidence and momentum. But the fact that it was a two-goal lead twice in the game and they called their way back into it gives them a glimmer of hope, as, as Steve said. 15 minutes in and we were saying, will it be three, will it be four, will it be five? And there's one goal in it going into the second leg. Yeah, and, and it's funny because you look at the Atletico Madrid game in the previous round and it was a team that said, oh, OK, we'll sit back and we'll wait. This was two teams going head to head, which makes for exciting football. You can see the fans in here. The emotion in this stadium today was crazy. One minute the fans around us, the City fans are up flying about. All of a sudden, a two goal lead goes down to one goal. And it happened twice in the game, two or three times in the game. Where you think, yeah. Oh, my God, we think it's over. We think we've done it now in terms of a City fan, I mean, and all of a sudden, yeah. Real Madrid come back again. And that was the great character. And we spoke about experience, didn't we, before the game. Real Madrid showed it. It was like it a couple something. of boxers just keeping on slugging at each other for the whole game. And I think, you know, sometimes we get so bogged down, don't we, with the specifics of defending and the touch screen and all the other things. But then you need to talk about momentum in football mm. and the psychological impact yeah. of either going a goal ahead or conceding a goal. The game changes entirely. Mm. Yeah, and that's... I mean, that's, that, that's the great thing about it, isn't it? Because we've all played in it and we've all experienced well, that moment. Three of us have. Well, yeah, I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to us. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, we, you know, we've all experienced those moments where you're way on top in a game and you think, this is easy, and then something happens, you know, whether it's just a mistake by mm. a, a tackle, something where you feel the shift changing. And then you, it's back to the wall and you think to yourself, how have we just got here? How have we, how have we achieved this when we should be way, way ahead? And it happened today. It didn't happen today once. It happened... Well, three times, 2-0, 3-1, 4-2. And I don't know why Manchester City started dropping off and allowing Madrid to come back onto them. Because whenever Manchester City went forward in the game, they dominated so much and made so many chances that you're thinking to yourself, don't make a mistake, manage the game, 2-0 up, 3-1 up, 4-2 up, just manage the game. And is they allowed... Is that because it's not Pep, though? That's not in his nature? No, yeah. just But chill. also the pressure. We spoke about that and what it does. We, we've seen elements of it in both teams, the fact that there was no patience in the defending from either mm. team. It was kind of like, I need to win it at all costs, when sometimes the best decision is to just delay yeah. and then allow teammates to get back in, which obviously wasn't the case. Well, it, it happened with Real Madrid as well. They yeah. showed they were naive, even though they're the most experienced team around, because whenever they got to a goal, Manchester City went down the other end and scored yeah. and then made chances again. So it's just one of those things, I think. That's what makes 
us all, everybody who paid the money, everybody who's watching it on the telly. That's why we come back and see it. How can Barcelona beat Liverpool 3-0 then lose 4-0 with the greatest players in the world on the team? Mm. That's why we that's keep football. watching it's exactly. Mad, it's, it's mad, though. You see that it, City have won here tonight. So you can't be too despondent mm, and no. too down. But I guarantee you there'll be players in there who'll be Fran Booch and yes. had so yeah. everything all over the place. The fans trudged out underneath us. Yeah, because they, like, they know what, what was in their palm of their hands yeah. at moments in this game and they've let it slip. But you've yeah. got to take that and turn that into a positive. We scored four goals here and we could probably score four again. We'll probably there. score four next week. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's yeah. what you've got to look at. It. All right, well, let's go through it then because, I mean, Bernardo Silva said at the end there, didn't he, in the first 20 minutes, we thought this was going to be a, a walk in the park and it felt like it. Utter domination. Yeah, yeah it did. And I think we look at the first goal here. When you, when you look at the way that they, they open them up, Mares, who at times was brilliant, but then at times frustrating to that, but here you see it. But you look here, the ball comes there. You've got a, we, we showed this at half time. Kavalik, you can see him looking at the, the De Bruyne. Rod, Rodrigo's looking at De Bruyne there. One of them's got to speak to this man here, Valverde, because that's your man. Once, once he starts making that run there in that area, you're already an opposing midfielder. Valverde's got to see that. But sometimes you need mm. talking to. He doesn't see it. It's a great point. But, Ree, from a, from a midfielder's point of view, you know your man is Kevin De Bruyne. Mm, yeah. So when that ball's wide, where is Kevin De Bruyne? Where do I need to attach myself? And, and where is he so I can pick him up? You, you can't even see him. You mm. speak as a defender. The last thing you want to do from a defensive point of view is make the attacker see your number. I agree with that, but we all need help. Yes, every 100%. Again. And you also wonder, Ree, is that... I know we said it again, we say for the second goal, if Casemiro's playing tonight, yeah. he's probably there. Yeah. He's probably watching Kevin De Bruyne and yeah. following him. Fede Valverde is a different type of midfielder mm. than a holding, sitting midfielder who smells danger. Yeah. Fede Valverde wants to run forward, so maybe he's just not aware, hasn't got the same thought mm. process as a defensive midfielder like mm. Casemiro. 100%. Nine minutes later. Yep, 2-0. I mean, it's, this, is, this is wonderful stuff. Phil, uh, Phil Foden at first, I thought at times was brilliant today. Great close control. Gets out of a tight area. But this here, I think for an experienced defender, as the ball comes in there, you just take it back for you slowly. Jolyon, you know, we, we said this immediately when this happened. Why are you trying to win the ball there? Yeah. All you've got to do as a defender there in this situation is make him play the ball backwards or let, let, let him take a touch. Mm. Do not let him yeah. turn and face the goal. That's all you've got to do. Just push him back where the ball's come from. Yeah. The moment you try to nibble, you give the, the and forward he's done the wrong side because now he's turned him inside, so now the whole goal's open. Mm. If, if he goes from the inside, the, 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 um, the angle's a bit tighter. But yeah, from someone, someone such with so much experience, very, very poor and naive. That. Mm. So that was the first time in the night when Manchester City had a, a two-goal lead and it looked comfortable. Let's have a look at the first time the two-goal lead got wiped out and it was that man again. Yeah, going what I would say about this is that this is not necessarily a City. Uh, mistake or a problem. Maybe Mares could have done better there, but they get a bit of fortune. And this is just all, well, as I said at half time, just all class, really. Benzema's, Benzema's movement, again, is always excellent. He always knows where the defenders are. He's not hurrying up into that space. He takes his time. He almost ambles in. He wants it in that space, stops, then goes again. So he's not offside. Gets across Zinchenko, and it's a really nice connection. Yes, it's bobbled, not flying in, but the angle of the Punt into the floor and off the post. Edison can't do anything about it. Could they have done more defensively there, or is that just no? Like I said, there you probably question Myers, but is that he offers so much going forward? I don't expect him to win 50-50s. Yeah, exactly. um, but in regards to the shape, it looks solid, and they're crossing the ball from a wide area, but it's outside the box or on the edge of the box, and you're thinking if you're going to have an opportunity, it's going to be from there. Mm. Look, we'll talk about Fernandinho and the challenge that, that he faced this evening from a defensive perspective, but obviously he was then the man who came on the pitch and and got the assist for, for Phil Foden's goal. Yeah, aggressive uh, on the front foot, really going to things, attacking the ball. And it was important in the goal. It was, it was a pivotal moment in, in, in terms of creating this opportunity. Um, yeah, we can pick holes in the way he played, but this was uh, this is one area that you thought, wow, at his age doing this, fantastic ball. But Phil Foden, that's, yeah. he, that's, that's Raheem Sterling in the last four or five years, mm. inside the post as a wide man coming in, smelling where the goals are going to be. It's an easy header in the end, but his position yeah, that was allows it. that. He, he recognises the situation faster than anyone. He's on the move and all of a sudden it's a, it's a free header. And you could question where is Carvalho, uh, Carvalho there. But in regards to Phil Foden, yeah, understood the picture and, and got into the box. And then this is the exact point, Macker, where you're saying 
manage the game. Yeah, manage yeah. the game now. This was, I mean, this was a real ugly goal to concede. Very, very ugly. He tries to do exactly the same again, Fernandinho. Well, and earth, yeah. you can almost say, yeah, why not? But Vinicius has learned. That was a mistake from Vinicius yeah. that time. Do you think because he nicked the ball for that goal? Yes, he was seen, doing exactly the same. Yeah. If you see wow. it, it's almost... I'll play a few in my people. Yeah, it's almost it, yeah. exactly the same. Fela Menzi plays in the ball. But this time, he's alert, Vinicius. He knows he's coming and he dummies it. So... Fernandinho then needs help off someone, and it should be Laporte. Laporte has to get across. Has to. Forget Why about does he Benzema. Not go across? I have no idea. I mean, these two boys are centre halves. They might explain it better, but he has Again, to forget about Benzema. He, yeah, he has to recognise the situation, but also potentially comes from Zinchenko yeah. telling him to get across. But I think. He can see it. Yeah. I, I, if Laporte goes across, Zinchenko naturally comes across then. And, and what, you forget about the wide Yeah. Man. And what you want to do is make the pass go backwards because then it's coming into your teammates so you're delaying the, the ball going back and you're allowing your teammates to recover because even Benzema at the end he pulls yeah. away but, and the thing is as well if you look here look at Zinchenko Zinchenko's actually Has marking yeah. he's marking he's Benzema so that should release Laporte to get out there and but defend again, against him but does he know, yeah. does he he's, know he's marking him the yeah. fact that there's probably yeah. no communication he doesn't know that Zinchenko's in position to pick him up the, yeah. the madness of the goal sums up the madness yes. of the night, doesn't it? Does, that, yeah. that particular goal does, because he runs 50, 60 yards and gets into the six-yard box when he when he slots it home yeah. <laughs> without, a, without a challenge from anybody. And, and that, that shouldn't happen at this level. And to be fair to him, Vinicius, today he didn't play well. <laughs> Got the one chance, yeah. though, put it in the back of the net. So yeah. um, he showed his quality, but I think Laporte, he could stop that goal mm. way earlier. We're talking about madness. Let's try and pick the bones out of this one. Then the ref was brilliant to play advantage. Yeah. What impact do we think it had, though, on the opposition, on the defenders, on the goalkeeper. Yeah, you could say that, that they're waiting for the whistle to be blown because they see the whistle go towards his mouth. But mm. the old cliche, you play to the whistle. Mm. Um, the fact that he's, he's got fouled and great decision by the ref to, to play the advantage, but you cannot take nothing away from Bernardo Silva's finish. Yeah, the, I think that mm. the speed of it, I, I don't think the keeper is able to, to react. It's evident that he isn't because he doesn't move, but. He's the first one to react, Bernardo Silva. He picks up the ball and he's surrounded. So, is that even an, an advantage? At yeah. First, I thought it was keep, keeper's got to save it. It's near side. He's that side of the goal, more importantly. But when you see it here, the way the ball just sits up beautifully for him, it's a lovely strike, clean as you like. Look, the ball doesn't move in slow motion like that. It's so clean. But, but if you're picking, like he's setting himself, doesn't yeah. he? But if you're picking a scenario and. Zinchenko's just been fouled. Would you want a free kick for, for Kevin De Bruyne? Or would you want him to pick up the ball surrounded by three players? You'd probably want the yeah. free kick. So yeah. the, the fact that he's took the responsibility and to do that is amazing. OK, can we talk about mentality now for a second? When you've missed three of your last four penalties and yeah. you're in a Champions League semi-final yeah. and it's been this crazy to-and-fro game. Oh, just break down for people at home, people like me that have never played the game of football. At what point do you think Karim Benzema decides to do what he does for the <laughs> We missed two like in his last game against Osasuna, and the goalkeeper. Yeah, keeper saved them. Yes, goalkeeper yeah. saved them, and he's probably thought, or he may have thought, I have no idea. He may have thought that Edison's studying where he's trying to put yeah. the ball. He's probably studied and oh, he's put four there in the last ten. He's put five there because he scored a lot of penalties. He's missed four this season already, even though he scored all the goals. He hasn't done a penenka, so instead of him going <laughs> left or right, he's probably thinking, you know what? Now's the time. I mean, yeah, I didn't have that. Met, you know. I didn't mentally, have that you have to be, mentally, you have to be rock <laughs> solid, don't you? No. I, I grabbed, I grabbed, I went, oh my God, what's going on? How dare he? I mean, let's put it right. Like, first of all, penalty. penalty, no yeah, question. It was a penalty. No, yeah. 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 But you've got to remember, I think um, uh, Glenn said it in, in the commentary, how long it takes between that incident there and mm -hmm. actually the ball being on the spot and him taking it. It's a long time to think. And the longer, the more time you've got to think, the more nerves, the more... Yeah. Well, wow. I don't know with him if there's nerves no, involved. It's cold. Ice cold, this guy. Yeah. Like I said before, he's won four Champions League. Yes. This is a minor to him. And also, it? Ray, that's his 41st and 41 games this year. Yeah. Yeah, yeah he's been there, he's seen this. Is that his first Champions League penalty as well? When do you think he decided to go with the Penenka then? Doesn't matter. He, he <laughs> doesn't matter. If, even yeah. if it's last minute, it don't matter. Uh, he just, he's executed. Look yeah, at him. the execution makes yeah, me that's, he thought not, about it. They're not 4 0 up. They're 4 2 down when he's oh. doing that. So he knows that if he misses, it's the, game over. The, yeah, the pressure's on and he's going to get, regardless of his record this year, he'll be criticised to, to the hilt after not letting somebody else yeah. have a, a, take the penalty because he's missed. And I think a lot of people will talk about the Palenka and that, rightly so, that should get a lot of, a lot of um, highlight. But. His all-round game, yeah. again today, was something to marvel at. Again, retaining the ball, retaining possession, bringing others into it, 
pressing at times as well, and obviously taking up positions to finish the chances that come into the box. It wasn't even a chance, really. Mm. But he is an absolute fantastic, fabulously talented player. Having these two defenders that you see, we're not focusing so much on the goal scorers. <laughs> Seven goals scored in tonight's semi-final. Remarkable game of football, of course. What do the managers make of it? Might help them, the fact that they're away from home and they don't need just to keep on piling yeah. forward. The one they're up, they can take the time and they can maybe manage the game a little bit better tonight. But it's a semi-finals of Champions League do things to certain people. You have to be able to handle every bit of pressure that will come with it and it'll build up until next Wednesday. I, I do agree with Pep, though, in that he still you can there, there's a, there's a confidence that can be born out of we're creating chances. Yeah. Mm. We're scoring goals, but we're creating chances. I think you'd be more nervous as a City fan and a City player if you weren't getting the opportunities mm. and weren't creating and weren't dominating possession, etc. So I think there's a lot of positive still to take from tonight. Yeah. Well, we loved it, and we're up. Before we go any further, let's hear from Carlo Ancelotti. He's now joined Des down in the tunnel. Des, over to you. Carlo, that was a, a roller coaster ride. Could you enjoy it? Uh, as a supporter of football, of course, it was a fantastic game. As a manager of Real Madrid, I think I have to take in consideration with that we scored three goals, and that is what was really important, but we didn't defend so well, so we could defend better. Uh, we conceded uh, two goals so early in the game, and then we were uh, able to react really well, uh, and we did the, we did well. We kept the game open until the end, and of course now we have a, a great dream to 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 play the second game in Bernabeu, and uh, and we hope we can have a chance to go to the final. We saw again that your side doesn't lie down. I mean, there were times, it, particularly in the first half, where it, it looked like they might get away from you. But you managed to stay in the game. You did it against Chelsea. You did it against Paris Saint-Germain. I think the, 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 this team, this player, are able to don't lose mind when uh, the, the things are uh, are not good. We did the same. The, the first 20 minutes were really difficult. But uh, after that, slowly, slowly, we were able to come back in the game and to keep the the qualification open. What about that penalty from Benzema? I mean, to do a Penenka in the semi-final, that's just outrageous. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think it changed um, because uh, the last two penalties were not good. He changed, he tried in training. I didn't know what, how he could shoot. He chose this and he did really well, showing strong, strong personality and character. No? Not easy. The semi-final Champions League do uh, shoot a penalty like this. So, as you mentioned, to the Bernabeu, you always talk about the magic of the place. So, do you, do you need that now? Yeah, we need because we are going to play against a really strong team. They show fantastic quality today, but we were we competed and and we, we have to compete more uh, in our stadium. Thanks, Carlo. Thank you. Ciao. <laughs> Look, it's a place you know well. How much of a chance do you give Real next week? I give them more of a chance how the game's finished than I did 20 minutes into the game because I, I thought the game was going to finish tonight as a contest. So um, I give them an opportunity. I give them a chance. I think there'll be goals. I think Manchester City will go through. I really do. I'm not going to change my mind just of what I've seen. If anything, it, it enhances my, my opinion on Manchester City, the strongest team. They just need to be a little bit more savvy in getting the uh, getting the job done next week, but I think it'd be a great game because Madrid can only play one way. Those Pochmas interviews have been a quite a good little insight, haven't they, into the psychology of the two camps? You see, like the deflation a little bit from Pep, but whether he said the right things, you could see the body language where Carlo a little smile on his face, drops a little chow in at the end. He he will leave here relieved, won't he, after the way that game started? Oh, 100%. And, and will he be more relieved that they've scored three or only conceded four? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, in regards to the outcome of the game, yes, he would have expected to come in and it'd be tough. Um, but yeah. to be in the game and still be in a tie would be huge for him. Um, and potentially, off the back of a, a title, they could be winning the title on the weekend. Mm. So it could be mm. it could be huge for yeah. them next week. I, I think it's, it's, um, this, this Real Madrid team, they've shown that they're able to suffer in games, but don't panic. And understand, and they, they understand through the experience that there's going to be moments like that in the game, but they just stay stay in there, they stick in there. They're like a wasp, a little fly in the room that just you keep swatting, but they keep coming back. And so that character is, is something that could lead to fear in the opposing dressing room because you know that they're going to be hard to get rid of. But I, I, I'm with the guys. I think Man City will have too much um, and they'll show their quality in the second leg. 
And I would now ask you what you're all expecting tomorrow night at Anfield. But I think the way it's going this season, we're best to leave that because who knows what the Champions League's going to offer. Goals, you want goals. Liverpool, <laughs> we'll get goals. That's yeah, what we. I'm expecting, Liverpool win. <laughs> I thought you might be. Um, so